we are continuing the speed run. Hey, Mr. Maxers. Um, I will be playing viewers if you're around my rating. I want to keep it a legitimate speed run, meaning I play players like within 100 points or so of where I'm at. So if you're around the 1100 range, you can send me a challenge, 10-0. Um, but I am just going to, for the most part, I'll probably just be playing, playing the pool because I want to get a wide range of openings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're like high rated, I don't know why you would even want to <laughs> want to donate your, your points. Uh, <laughs> but here we go. We're going to be continuing to play uh, all D4 and as black, I'm going to be doing um, E4, E5 and also the King's Indian. And uh, all right, we got a Dutch. We got a Dutch the other day. I think um, I'm gonna stick to playing G3 systems. I really believe in these. D5 looks like we're getting a stone wall. So Bishop G2, maybe E6 here for black. Okay, and now we're gonna go C4. All right, if they take this pawn, we can almost always win it back with either some Knight D2 in the future or Queen A4. We do have to be careful not to hang the D pawn. So we might even play Knight F3 there. In general, we're not worried about uh, losing this pawn. Um, let's see, do we want to go knight d2 first? I think we want to go knight h3 here. This is one of the only positions where I actually think knight h3 is a good way to develop the knight because it can go to this f4 square. Um, let's just castle. But it's funny because on the first episode of this, I saw, um, actually a lot of players playing knight h3 in all kinds of positions that they, no business. I mean, the knight should, <laughs> the knight should be going f3, guys. I think if you're at this level, I wouldn't mess around with knight h3, I would just put the knight on f3 for the most part. At least you should have a good reason uh, not to. Okay, so here's kind of the point of this line. We can trade off, or try to trade off our dark squared bishops and um, leave black with some dark square weaknesses. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'd be following just some simple strategic guidelines here, because I want this to be educational. I want to kind of show people the path, you know, how to be players at various levels, sticking to solid opening principles and healthy habits of calculation. Hey, Jackson Chess, how's it going? Okay, knight c6. So, my first instinct is to just try to develop this knight somehow. We can also think about uh, taking on d6. Knight c3 here actually makes a lot of sense to me. If black takes, we'll go bc. Now we're not really worried about the doubled c pawns because we're going to be able to trade this one off whenever we want to. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with knight c3, just kind of the most natural move actually, just putting pressure on the center, developing the knight, possibly threatening c takes d5. Uh, if black takes on c4 again at any moment, I think it just opens up the bishop and we're not worried about this one. People were kind of asking about the Catalan. I mean, this is a simple uh, or similar type of setup, I would say. We're just using this bishop on the diagonal. Yeah, I don't really like c5 in these kinds of positions, closing it up. Because... Um, like, when you play c5, you really just kill your own bishop on g2. And you kill all of the pressure you have on black center. And then the bishop isn't even necessarily worse on e7. Like, it's still going to find something to do. Uh, so I think it's just, just not worth it, ultimately. Okay, queen f6. The guy's playing sharp. I mean, he's hitting this pawn. I'm tempted to just play e3. This would be like the blitz or bullet move, but... Maybe we should calculate here also. C takes d5, takes, knight takes d5, and I think this guy is going to be hanging at the end. So this is kind of looking promising. I feel like I should maybe take here. Black takes with something, and then I just take twice on d5, and I threaten knight c7 check as well as the queen. So winning the exchange. But the issue is after I take, there's going to be knight takes d4. So I'm thinking takes, 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 knight takes d4. Then I can take on e4. Yeah, feels like that's not gonna be a good 
position for black. So let's go ahead and take. So this is rapid, which means that it's not like we have all the time in the world to calculate. We do have to kind of like make decisions relatively quickly. Um, okay, takes with the knight. So now cd5, knight takes d4. Might be a little bit more solid for black. Can we go e3 there? Is the knight kind of trapped? I've seen this idea before. The knight on d4 can get trapped and it looks like e3 is actually annoying. Knight will go to b5. Take and then other knight will take and that just feels very misplaced for black. You, you don't really have time for e3 anymore because of course this one is hanging. So yeah, I think we're going to take this one. I don't know, on chess.com, 10-0 is nowadays considered rapid. Okay, black just takes back. I don't think this was critical, because now I take this pawn, and I hit the queen, and I also hit knight takes c7, winning the rook. So this is going to be at least a free pawn. And then if black decides to just defend, okay, we can play e3 if we want. We can go knight f4. Okay, black decides to go for this one. Um, I think this is just going to be winning a rook for us. Now, the only question is, do we want to take on d4 or do we want to just trade uh, just take the rook immediately probably doesn't make too big of a difference i wish i could somehow play bishop take c6 check though the problem is knight takes c7 king d8 there's bishop take c6 won't come with check uh that's okay though we'll have to contend ourselves with uh just getting the rook contend ourselves that doesn't make sense I don't think this decision is really that scary. It's not like our king is in danger if we keep the queens on the board. I'm just trying to figure out, well, I guess, you know, if we take here, it does at least let black take the pawn on e2, right? So maybe that's, not that that's good for black, but all right, it's a reason to just take and leave the queens on the board, right? Like actually it's kind of instructive. We let black take, oh, king d7. Wow, I really wasn't expecting this. That doesn't make sense actually. Like why not go king? D8. Does anyone understand? Like, why would King D7 feel feel better? Unless Black is hallucinating and thinking Knight E6 is a problem. Probably not a mouse slip. Yeah, the gifts keep coming. All right. Well, now we're gonna take this one because this is removing the defender of the Queen on D4, and that's just an easy win. I understand he's not high rated, but uh, even for a low rated player, it's not like this move makes more sense than than king d8 like the guy developed his pieces clearly he's not like a complete like this isn't his first game of chess right like <laughs> i mean it's not like he he played this better than you know i've seen 1800s play some games you know so it's not like <laughs> it's not like he's just a total total noob So maybe they thought there might be another fork on f7. If, you see, that's the kind of reasoning I was looking for. Yeah, it's because I'm just wondering. There's probably some reasoning for it. Okay, we can get fancy with rook c1, but really no reason. Let's just take the queen. And now we can just get the rest of our pieces into the game. Now king d7 feels kind of forced, but anyway, it's over because rook d1 is coming and the knight will be lost. So that's going to be that. We can also take on g7 here, but I think using all the pieces in the attack probably the most instructive way to go so <laughs> we're gonna do that okay now we could pre-move this one that's an instructive pre-move the fact that we can do it all right gg oh i need to update the score last time i just kept forgetting to update the score every single time it was very difficult hopefully you guys can actually remind me that would be helpful to, to update the score All right, we're playing white here. Let's go d4, d5, queen's gambit. Here we go. I got quite a few DCs. Yeah, people do this a lot, actually. I didn't realize people do this so much at this level. The unsolvable puzzle was the best part. That was fun. I mean, you know, like, I don't think that was a waste of time, actually. I think we all, like, practiced our calculation. We looked for... Um, you know, we looked for ideas, we looked for defenses, and so what, there wasn't a solution. <laughs> but, but it doesn't mean that, that all calculation went went to waste. Like, we still used our brains. Actually, I, I, 
might have didn't even matter, I think. Because, like, we you know, we, we still calculated accurately. We found all the right defenses, right, to everything we were trying. Okay, e5. So here, I think the best, not f3, the best move is knight f3. If we take this one, queen takes d1, king takes d1, it's kind of a bad endgame because we moved our king already and it's, it's not going to be safe. Um, I can't play any king's gambit in this run because this is a all d4 speed run only, but I will do an e4 run later on. And and then I'll I might play some King's Gambit, although I'm not sure if I will, but I might. I might. Okay, Bishop G4, totally natural move. Um and you know I don't really know what to do with this one, so I'm kind of on on my own here. My first thought is Bishop takes C4. And then if E takes D4, we're gonna have this trick with Bishop takes F7 check, King takes Knight E5 check. So this one looks like a good move to me. Just developing, grabbing a pawn, and creating a tactical threat in the meantime. In general, guys, whenever the bishop comes to g4, you kind of want to look for these tricks with bishop c4, bishop takes uh, f7. Hey, Chess Fabry, guys, thanks for subscribing and unfollowing. Indeed, doing this correctly. <laughs> okay, this one, I think we can just. Um, well, knight c3 actually, I'm not sure, e takes d4, could be a little bit annoying, queen b3, it's gonna get sharp, but I do believe in white's position. Let's see, we can also play a little bit simpler with bishop d2, take, knight takes, and then again we have this bishop takes f7 threat. Not sure if this is really the way to go, I feel like knight c3 is kind of the, uh, the critical choice. So on ed4, we also have queen a4 check, knight c6. It's a little wonky. So knight c3, e takes d4, queen b3, take on c3, take on f7, king f8, take, king takes bishop. Knight e5 check, the line continues. Oh, we have knight e5 at the end and we take this one. You know, it's probably good for white, that whole position. It's probably actually good. Hey, back. <laughs> Bach Ian, I have no idea how to say your name. It's a total stumper. Thanks, uh, thanks for the hundred bits. Much appreciated. Bach Ian. We can also go King F1. Like I'm not, uh, I'm not opposed to King F1 here, because it actually comes with the benefit of keeping all of the threats in the position and not giving Black any easy moves. You know what? I'm really tempted to go king f1 because then we still have this bishop takes f7 threat and we also have queen b3 as a threat as well. Yeah, let's go king f1. We're just gonna try it. Move six, king f1, breaking all the rules. Very instructive. Do I think the King's Gambit is playable at high am level? Yeah. Yeah, it's all playable. I mean, Adiban played the King's Gambit against Wesley So <laughs> in Waikanze, like a super important match. Um, so yeah, I think it's playable at am level. <laughs> and and Adiban was like winning that game, uh, or at least he was much better. Okay, so yeah, the reason I didn't like bishop d2 is because um, I just felt it was a little bit simple because it lets black trade off this bishop. And after king f1 uh, takes on d4, I like that this bishop is hanging. So yeah, my first instinct here is either queen b3 or we can play bishop takes f7, knight e5. This is also, but queen b3 might be stronger actually. Like <laughs> queen b3 might just be, well, queen b3, queen e7, and even a3, whoops. If bishop moves, we'll take on b7 with just devastating, devastating threats. Yeah, let's go queen b3. I think this is the more instructive move. <laughs> I like to, I like to try to play for, play for as much as I can. Queen e7, we can even consider bishop g5 also. The only thing, I just want to make sure I don't get like checkmated somehow. That's the only thing. If we don't get mated, we're good. 
you guys can write that down. If you don't get checkmated, you're good. Okay, Kosti, what would you suggest for an E4 player to learn something on D4? Like, but don't know, should I start London or so? Well, Levy, why do you want to play D4? And that's the question. Because if you don't have a good answer to this question, then I think it's just like not worth it. Okay, again, we can take twice on F7 and go knight E5 and get that endgame. Or we can take on F7, take on B4. Or we can go bishop G5, knight F6, E5. That looks dangerous. Everything looks really dangerous. Bishop G5, F6. Take, take, right? It's not the most obvious position to figure out, I would say. Like, there's knight takes G5, but I don't know, we're kind of losing... Losing a little bit of coordination, I feel. I kind of like this very simple a3 and then queen takes b7. To me, that just looks like we're taking a rook. Although, it could be a little bit risky. Maybe black gets some... Initiative? Hard to call that a real initiative. Yeah, let's go a3. Let's play what we think is best. Bishop takes f3. Fair move. He wants to take and see if I take with my queen. I think I'm going to take with the pawn. Actually keeping e4 defended, but more importantly just keeping the attack on b7. Oxygen, you might be right actually. I didn't, I didn't consider h5 at the end of that line. I'm not sure if we have a way out. <laughs> can, someone, can someone please remind me what the ortho schnapp is? I saw what it was, but I forget. I forget what it was. Like, I don't, I don't remember what, what the moves were. Fortnite says, I feel like a lot of players at this level don't use their time, which seems as much a mistake as, as anything. Yeah, uh, definitely I see players playing, and it's not, actually, it's not even just this level, so I feel like it's not fair to say it's this level. Honestly, like, whenever we p watch people play 90-30 or 45-30, like, on Sunday Night Fights, like, they're finishing the game with, like, 40 minutes on their clock or, like, five minutes less than what they started with. So it's, like, players of... And, and th these are, like, higher rated players, like, 1,800, 2,000. People play fast online at all levels. Um, maybe not people. Maybe it's mostly, like, kids <laughs> that are playing quickly and adults kind of take their time. In fact, I know a lot of adults struggle more with getting into time trouble rather than playing too fast. Uh, so yeah, Brayden is an adult player, so he, he knows how to use this time. But I agree, I mean, uh, use your time, absolutely. That's the whole point of uh, playing Rapid, is you get a little bit more time than Blitz, and you can use it, try to make good decisions. So here, for example, like we could just take the Rook, and that's probably good, but let's at least consider some options, right? Like Queen C8 check, maybe this is better. It always baffles me and Jesse when like we have a complicated position in front of us. There's like a million moves uh, that are possible, and then both players are just playing quickly as if they see like all of the most uh, like forced moves. Like none of this is forced. What are you guys doing? Take your time. So here, for example, I just noticed that this one is hanging, right? So maybe queen takes queen takes f3 should be calculated. Okay, we're taking this with check. Then king moves, right? It's like not... This queen is in our business. Probably it's not a big deal, but... We seem to play knight d2 here. Defend everything, and this rook is not going anywhere. Also this check, but this check king e7, right? So, okay, running low on time. Let's play knight d2. Yeah, Levy, I, I would say you gotta be careful. It's not like, you know, one game you just play like e4, one game you play like d4. It's not like you can just learn d4 in a week, right? And you're just like ready to play. It's it's a whole project. So I, I don't know, I think 
if you're happy with e4, focus on, um, you know, trying to maximize how good you are at e4. You know, some people play e4 for like 20, 30 years, you know, they become grandmasters and only then they switch to d4. Only then they feel like, okay, now I feel ready, you know, so take your time. Uh, all right, we're going to grab this rook here because now we are winning a lot of material. Yeah, become a GM first and then you can play D4. That's how it works. Like Karpov, exactly. I think most players should just be playing like E4 when they're starting out. Uh, let's take this guy with check before we don't get another chance. And then we'll uh, recapture this guy. Although we can think about throwing this one, but now we're kind of running low on time, right? So we don't want to, we don't want to run out of time. What was stopping him from playing queen c6 a few moves earlier? I'm not sure. I think that was possible. We would always have a bishop d5 move uh, at some point to uh, to probably win the material anyway. Okay, now we're looking for the attack. We have queen and like two bishops. I think we should have enough. Let's start with this check and then the queen can kind of come in next somewhere. One of these squares, I'm guessing. We have a lot of extra material. This is the one thing that's kind of hanging in our position. Okay, let's bring the bishop in with check. Don't have to think about this one too much. Although maybe queen d8 there was also good. Now I think either... Okay, has to be one of these moves. And let's take this guy. You could calculate here a little bit, but it doesn't feel fully necessary as long as you're doing stuff with check. Like we're always going to have rook g1 whenever we want to uh, if we're running out of time. But I don't think we'll even need need this one. Um, okay, let's throw in this check. See if we can drive the king to the g file and get our rook involved with tempo. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now I think we're going to have queen g5 mate coming next. Can we mate with the bishop? We could, but it would take longer, so not worth it. Okay, GG. D4, E5. Okay, I've been waiting for this. We're going to take this one. We take these. F6. Unbelievable. This is what people do. And it makes sense, you know, they get some development, they get their their pieces out. It makes sense. Uh, let's go knight f3. So we can just recapture this pawn with the knight. Knight c6. Now again, we could just take here. I'm wondering if there are any simpler options. Yeah, actually, let me just play e4 here and then go bishop c4. We're gonna show the problem with this f6 move. We're not gonna just go for this like silly gamut. We're just gonna put the bishop on c4. We're gonna say, how are you gonna castle, bro? <laughs> how are you gonna castle? We're just gonna, we're gonna castle. We're gonna castle big time. We can go knight g5 here maybe too. Could be even better. We're just gonna castle. <laughs> we can go knight g5. Queen d5, I think there's queen e7 still. Yeah, let's go knight g5. Run in this one. d5. Okay, typical uh, fried liver response, but this isn't the fried liver. This is like a different position. So <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work out for. Uh... Yeah, this is just hanging. Like, this is not this is not the fried liver. Can't can't just do this. You can't do this. Okay, just can't. Bishop takes g8, queen d5. Yeah, I taught you, right? Well, I was trying to make this instructive and not like, you know, this would have been too easy, but that's a good one. <laughs> no, that would have been very instructive, actually. For those that missed it, it was here. Well, 
Let's see, are there any tricks? Probably not. Take, take, queen, d5. And hitting everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have knight f7, queen takes d5. Can go queen h5, check g6, or bishop f7. King will move. Tempted to go here actually, and then on g6 maybe check. E7. Mm. I mean everything should be good for white. I'm just trying to figure out like what would be. Yeah, we're up a piece. I don't even know what I'm what I'm concerned about here. <laughs> Yeah, let's give this check. King will move and then we'll play c3. Or bishop b3. Everything should be good. Do want to watch out for h6 a little bit, but yeah, I like c3. Knight f7 I feel like is not that fun because black takes on d5 and then we gotta take the stupid rook. Not a fan. Yeah, knight takes e6, I think. Hey, BK Chess, thanks for following. How long do I think someone should stick to an opening until they move on? Well, if if you don't like the opening, then you can you can give up on it. But if you like the opening and you want to stick to it, then I think you should just play it until you get sick of it. Or until it's like, you know, you're not having fun with it. I played the French for a while. I played the French from like... 1800 or so until 22, 2300. Uh, and yeah, I think 2300. And then I gave it up on it. I switched to e4, e5 because I was just kind of tired of like getting like no space, cramped position, just getting checkmated every game. Bishop takes h7, always possible. I was just tired of it. You know? <laughs> and I wanted to just put the pawn on e5. You know, in the French, I was always so happy when I opened up my bishop, and then I had a revelation. Why don't I just play e5 on move one? <laughs> don't close the bishop. All right, king e7. Would be great to just go bishop takes g5 here, but this isn't capture your own pieces chess, unfortunately. Now, okay, bishop is kind of hanging. I'm tempted to just bring it back. Kind of keep it simple. Ooh, 94 is a good move. Why aren't I thinking about 94 and just taking this guy? Yeah, I think this is probably the simplest way to go. Okay, French is not a borderline troll opening. French is a good opening, it's just not for everybody. Yeah, it's very funny, Sinan. Okay, now that we're not worried about this bishop anymore, now we just want to play f4 and uh, open things up. Okay, b6. So let's think about f4, take, take, eh, not so obvious. Let's just bring the knight back. 
also play knight d3 actually, hitting e5 pawn. Might even be better. Knight e4, let's think about this. Knight e4, bishop b7. Let's go queen h5 check, take on e5. Yeah, a lot of... A lot of good ideas here. <laughs> Geary is an absolute beast, that's true. No, people... <laughs> yeah, people have been ragging on Geary because of that one Canada's tournament. But like... He's, uh, I mean, like, so strong. I mean, just an absolute monster of a player. Max, that's actually not true. <laughs> like, they analyzed it, and in terms of, like, fighting chess, Geary is, like, one of the most fighting players out there. Like, in terms of the number of moves that they actually play, Geary is ahead of people like... Hikaru, Rajabov, <laughs> like he's ahead of a lot of people in terms of like how many moves. I think Kramnik is like the most combative player <laughs> that they analyzed like in the last couple of years because he had that kind of a uh, crazy streak. And then, um, yeah, I think we're going to go check and, and take this one. But Geary's also, yeah, one of the most fighting players out there. Yeah, there was some stat, like he had the least draws of all the top 20 and maybe 2019. I don't know what it was, but I remember seeing that. So yeah, yeah, no, it's a total meme that he's just... It was just the, yeah, the candidates turn in, of course. And you certainly don't keep your 27, 80, 90 rating by just drawing. That's... Completely accurate. Okay, I want to be precise here because our, our stuff is under attack, but we do have a lot of checks um, that we can resort to if we need. Like queen f4 check, for example, and then the knight can move. Or knight g5, king g8, and then queen can go to like f4 or something. Oh, but oh, ooh, ooh, gotta be careful, guys. Gotta be careful, knight e2. So let's not... Let's not mess around here. I'm actually kind of regretting allowing all this. I feel like this was way... Like I was being too greedy, should have just been developing my pieces. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to give check and go knight g3. That's seeming like the only, only reasonable way. Okay, let's give this check. Oh, this one allows uh, to get away. Oh, I didn't notice this actually. On King G, we'd have Knight of Six, so yeah. This one somehow escaped me, but yeah, now that's very apparent that we just want to get our queen off of this square as soon as possible. Okay, now let's play knight g5. Actually, take here also. Yeah, let's take here actually, because on king e7 we can bring the bishop in. Alright, king f8, we got the main in one. Okay, that's gonna be a gg. All right, let's keep it going. We're going D4. Offer shot says less than 60%. So in terms of like the percentage, I guess I'm, I'm counting draws. So like if white scores two wins and two draws, then that would be a 75% score because you're getting three out of four points possible. Oh, another QGA. Getting so many QGAs in this run, it's funny. Every game. Okay, B5. This is a line. This is playable. This is actually a line. <laughs> uh, let's go... 
A4, we're going to challenge the structure. Julian says they wouldn't even have a majority <laughs> of, of wins. And what percentage of Blitz games are won where at any point the losing side was winning plus two or more? Julian says it would be close to 99%. That seems extreme. That seems extreme. Okay, but this is not really the right way to play this. This line is playable, but like has to play C6 here and then knight c3, a6. There's this kind of funny uh, exchange sacrifice. <laughs> That's true, most games are 1500. And, you know, you have a good point, Julian, you have a good point. But wouldn't it be just kind of random? Like, it doesn't really matter. It would just be like 50%, right? Like whoever gets plus two first, it almost just doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, okay, bishop a6. Anyway, the reason this move is not great is because the bishop is just not going to be a good defender. We can take, for example, take on c4, and go queen a4 check, and then take here. I think that's actually... It's probably the simplest way to get an advantage, but certainly not the only way. I think knight a3 or knight c3 is probably good too. But let's just stick to... Let's keep it simple. And then we're just going to win our pawn back that we sacrificed and we're going to argue that we're better because of our strong pawn center d4 e4. Hey Kimi Lu, how's it going? Who was Tarash? Tarash was uh, a beast. Tarash is like one of the best players of the, uh, the old times. Indeed, he invented the Tarash French, the Tarash defense and the QGD, a lot of openings. Uh, no, I actually do think Tarash had some of the most instructive games uh, as far as like the classics go. Like if you think about guys like Steinitz, Lasker, Alekhine, Capablanca, Rubinstein, Marshall, Janowski, Shigorin, Schlechter, all those guys from like the, the turn of the, uh, the 20th century. Uh, I think Tarash had the most instructive games of all those. Okay, this is a blunder because we are going to take this piece first. And then actually we're going to take the rook. Oh man, this is going to be painful. Then we're going to come back. We're going to windmill and take the bishop on c4. Steinus was, of course, an incredible player in his own right. Alakine as well. I think very obviously all of these players are extremely interesting and instructive. This is still theory, correct? Always repeat? No. Let's take. I think we're just gonna win this one <laughs> with the rook. I think the rook is all we're gonna need. So we already have this escape square covered. <laughs> Chagor, that's funny. To be honest, Tarash was right to hate Nimzovich. Yeah, what's the story between Tarash and Nimzovich? What's their beef exactly? I never quite understood it, but it's as far as I understand, Nimzo got credit for a lot of a lot of Darish's ideas. Uh, okay, so we have this check, king e7, bishop g5, f6, like, not so clear. I kind of want to play e5 first to kind of just push this bishop back. And then if bishop e7, then rook a check will be that much more unpleasant. Yeah, Nimzovich had a lot of beef, didn't he? He was calling everyone out. This guy can't, doesn't know this. This guy doesn't understand this. And the guy never found a tactic in his life, though. No, <laughs> just kidding. Nimzovich was really strong. He found lots of tactics. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I haven't heard about the uh, the bishop's opening guy. But that sounds funny. Okay, bishop b4. Wow. Caden, 2800, bullet. Nice. Uh, we're going to take this one. And then we're going to set up this check again and just try to bring in our pieces. Okay, let's give check. And our queen is going to be covering the castling, so we're happy about that. Um, I think this move feels right. Threatening take take the old maiden two. <laughs> yeah, anyone that made any kind of like predictions about chess back in the. Uh, the old times, <laughs> it really is embarrassed now. <laughs> Anyone who's like, oh, this opening is winning. There was a guy who wrote a pamphlet, like 1e4 is just winning. and Maybe that's what you guys were talking about. And yeah. Yeah, that guy, history will not be kind to him. His ideas didn't stand the test of time. Let's put it that way. Okay, I think we got this one again, yeah? King f7, of course, Rook is hanging. All right, that's gonna be a GG.